Uh, as if we didn't have enough problems with vintage electronics already. Now this is going to be uh, informative and a bit of a question because I don't know what exactly is causing this and I'm kind of curious if anybody else has noticed this. <clears throat> um, this problem is not just, now this is a CB radio, but uh, this problem I've noticed not only in CB radios, I've found it in home uh, stereo systems, uh, home stereo amplifiers, I've seen it in uh, auto radios. I did an 8-track player here some time ago. I noticed this problem in. So it seems to be anything vintage. Um, we're talking 70s and 80s vintage. And the problem I'm seeing is bad green poly, or poly dip uh, capacitors. The gr or green dips, green drops, whatever you want to call them. They go by a you know, bunch of nicknames. But they're the you know, little poly caps. And the problem I'm seeing is, and you see these are all nice and shiny, they look like, shoot, they look like the day they were put in. They're not the problem, and they will not be replaced. We go down here. What the hell is that? It looks like it's got white fungus growing all over it. It's like a powdery, crystalline... You can see, it right off onto my alignment tool. You know, what the hell... Problem is though, it's not just that it gets powdery. Notice that it's split open. Yeah, and that kind of defeats the entire purpose of these things being encased in epoxy. If the epoxy is cracked open, some of these actually it's already broken off. I turn this upside down. Man, their piece just broke out. I say I was fiddling with one just a second ago and actually broke. You see that? It they just disintegrate. They fall apart. So, that's a 0 0.03, looks like 50 volt. But uh, I'm wondering if anybody else has noticed this. And one thing that I've noticed is that it appears to be if all of certain values it will they'll either be good or they'll all be bad of a certain value so in this case if you look big one there's four big ones in this radio you know physical size that one that one i haven't even pulled the schematic out yet but i'm going to assume they're probably the same value because there's only i know in these radios there's only a couple values of these green poly dips but that one that one let me flip it around right down there and there all four of them white fuzzy you know it'll kind of look like something's growing on them and you can also see split open you see the cracks around there and actually that one right down there that was actually that piece where that broken piece popped off of it but you can see there's other ones it's not just the big ones there's a couple there i think there was another one down inside this crystal beside this crystal filter there's another one right here so it's not like it's might have been one lot of, you know, in a specific production run one day, you know, for a manufacturer that was bad because, you know, here in this radio, I think there's three different values that I've seen have done this. And like I say, you know, as if we didn't already have enough problems in, <laughs> in vintage electronics, this is something to be, you know, something to keep an eye out for. You know, aluminum electrolytics, we all know go bad by time. I mean, we know that when we put a brand new aluminum electrolytic capacitor in, it has a limited lifespan. They have date codes on them for a reason, because they only last so long before they start to deteriorate. You know, I had always been under the assumption that the, the green drops were kind of like ceramic capacitors. I'm not going to say, because nothing lasts forever, but, you know, pretty much along the lines of the green poly dips were, you know, probably going to outlast at least my lifespan, at least, you know, maybe a few people's lifespans. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Now, you know, one of my questions is, what is happening? Was it a, was it a problem with the epoxy? Um, you know, the resin, the hardener, when they, you know, these things were manufactured, what's, what's happening? I'm not a chemical engineer, so I, you know, I don't understand the decomposition process of epoxy. But uh, what would be causing this this breakdown to where it just kind of turns to breaks down, gets you know dust, and I, I assume what's happening is it's shrinking. That's why they're they're cracking open like that. They just split eventually. The shells just 
it's kind of like a nut. <laughs> the shell just cracks from around it, and then the, you know, the capacitor is completely exposed to the outside environment. Um, so, you know, it's, it's apparently, I guess it's off-gassing something. Something in there is crystallizing it, and it's turning into this white residue, and then as, as the, it, it shrinks, you know, it eventually just pops, and the outer, outer shell just completely disintegrates. So, yeah... So like I say, if we didn't have enough problems, old carbon composition resistors going bad, electrolytic, you know, aluminum electrolytics, tantalum capacitors going bad. Now we have green poly drop capacitors going bad. So, but this is kind of, like I said, kind of a heads up for people. You know, if you work on vintage electronics from the 70s, 80s vintage, um, this is going to be something something to keep your eye out for because I'll be changing all of those because they're no longer environmentally sealed. You know, as soon as that epoxy coating gets a the slightest crack in it it's now open to the outside environment and the you know the aluminum foil that's on the inside there is going to be prone to oxidize because moisture can now get in there so and yeah, sorry to be the bearer of bad news but more shit to keep an eye out for so there you go green poly dips going bad okay so i got all those nasty and little poly ester caps that are disintegrating removed there you can see one of them that had literally you know, lost half of its shell split open like a nut <laughs> but yeah I really don't know what the hell is going on there like I say it's only certain ones of the same value so actually these are these three big ones three of them were uh point ones and the other one was a point one five and that's another problem now luckily i have i guess you, as you can see quite the stockpile of and this is only the tip of the iceberg for my polyester cap assortments but uh some of these values i don't even know if you can get anymore i've got uh, like i say a hell of an inventory old you know old stock stuff but uh you know point one five uh was that this one no, that's a one it's the bigger one. I think it was this one. Yeah, that's actually a 0.15 microfarad, which is an oddball size. It's just it's also like there was a there was a couple 0.047s, but there was also a 0.05 one. Well, 0 0.047s are common. You know, four sevens. You know, ones. Three three, you know, two two, three three, four seven, six eights. So those are your common, you know, values. Move the decimal place wherever you want. But you know, there's oddball values in here, like a point oh five. You know, like I say, luckily I've got all those oddball values. But yeah, for some people, it may be hard trying to track down some exact replacements. But uh, and I did notice I changed this one here. This is a this is a new one. You can see it's actually it is off gassing of some sort because if you look at this resistor it's not it wasn't in physical contact with it but you can see there's that white residue on it. actually all the surrounding components there's that resistor there's got some on it the leg of that resistor you know on this side has it so it's it was off gassing and that that gas then crystallizes on all the surrounding components so <clears throat> yeah and like I say it looks yeah, the glitteriness <clears throat> doesn't really show up that well on camera. Well, like I say, it's almost like salt crystals is what it reminds me of. You know, some type of crystal. Um, I guess what I should be more concerned about than the radio is me and everybody else's health. Uh, I'd be very interested if <clears throat> either you are, if you're watching this, or you happen to know a chemical engineer... Um, to find out what, uh, not only what's not so much, not that it really matters what's happening here, but, uh, is this stuff hazardous? Um, you know, it seems like everything inside of electronics wants to kill you. You know, the electricity wants to <laughs> electrocute you. You've got, the, the, if you do soldering, you got to worry about lead. Lead is extremely poisonous when you're soldering the fumes from soldering. You know, that's extremely poisonous, all kinds of you know, acids and other chemicals, organic compounds and soldering fumes, you know, flux fumes. See, I mean, everything inside these damn radios are trying to kill you to start with. And I'm just wondering, is this another thing I need to be aware of? 
do I need to take any special precautions when when working with the uh, deteriorated capacitors? Like, there you can see it's you're getting some of the glittering. You can see the little sparkles on that thing. You know, do I need to worry about that? Is there are there health you know health hazards? I'm going to have to worry about 10, 15, 20 years down the road. You know, uh, you know respiratory problems. So yeah, just like I say, more more crap to worry about. So you can see all of, all of, all four of the caps down there were changed, and all the other ones that were disintegrating. But uh, yeah, so heads up, radio techs, more problems to be aware of. And like I say, if anybody knows uh, what's going on, and I guess more to the point, is it is it hazardous in some way? Uh, you leave a comment, be greatly appreciated. Uh, I'm sure myself and all the rest of the repair community would uh, appreciate some input on the health hazards of that if there are any.